Cape in the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, home of Volkswagen and host of the fifth round of the South African Rally Championship. The previous round of the South African Rally Championship, the Toyota Gauteng Dealer Rally, began in miserable conditions on the East Rand, with a big question whether the two factory teams had any answer for the privateer Fords that had begun to dominate the championship. Initially, the battle was between Mark Renier in the Sassel Ford Fiesta and Leroy Bolte in the works Castrol Toyota Auris, with Camille de Villiers in the factory BB Volkswagen Polo right in the mix. John Williams rolled the Sassel Ford Fiesta out of contention, while two-time winner and points leader Conrad Rotenbach in the Green Fuel Fiesta retired with a mechanical failure. The Pertec Peugeot team showed their potential with the strongest performance of the season, while in the final stage, Bolter lost a chunk of time with a gentle roll, chasing teammate Johnny Gemmel for second. Gemmel had shown a good turn of speed, while defending champion Enzo Kuhn slowly worked his way to the front to finish a provisional third. Charles Wilkin in the Basel Reed Ford Fiesta was provisionally second, but on raw speed, no one could catch Cournier, who wrapped up the provisional victory. The results of the event are still subject to final ratification by Motorsport South Africa. Round five of the South African Rally Championship is proudly brought to you by Volkswagen. After three consecutive inland events, the South African Rally Championship moves to the Eastern Cape for the first of three consecutive coastal events, with a Volkswagen Rally run in the forests and surroundings of Port Elizabeth and Utenay. Rally headquarters was at the impressive Volkswagen Pavilion at the company's factory in Utenay, where enthusiasts could immerse themselves in the history of this long-time supporter of South African motorsport before focusing on the start. Warm and sunny skies have brought a huge crowd to the start of the fifth round of the South African Rally Championships, the Volkswagen Rally in the Eastern Cape. After a controversial end to the last round, we're going to have to see if the drivers can put it all behind them in the fast-flowing stages of the Longmore Forest. As provisional championship leader, Conrad Rotenbach had the unenviable task of running first on the road on day one. You know, first of the road's not, not great, and I think this is the one event where a little hurt us a bit more than, than normal, but uh, there's nothing we can do about it. we just got to try to do our best. You know, last year we had a, set some good times in that and uh, had a good feeling with the car, so we're just going to try to repeat that and uh, just do our best. This is one of my favourite, and I've done well here in the past. Last year we won it, so, no, the car's feeling good. Did some testing yesterday, so we'll give it a full go today and tomorrow. You've won this event six times. Good road position today. You've got to be confident. Being eighth on the road, I think, will definitely be an advantage. Uh, yeah, it's a tough event, but one of our favourites, and uh, we'll give it our best. Well, the big question is, of course, can Volkswagen do well on their home event? Time will tell. Rotenbach leading the field of their Matt Smith with me. That's a big, big penalty, actually, to run first on the road. Yeah, you know, these guys aren't going to know what's going to be down the road. And we've had changeable conditions down here as well. Dust is not going to be a factor, but stones, rocks, loose dirt is definitely going to play into it as well. In the first stage, a 19.25. That's pretty long to start things dusting off. Stage one, Culturama, 19.25 kilometers of dirt in the Longmore Forest. So uh, they're really being thrown into the deep end right from the word go. I think dust gaps aren't going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem to try and find the lurkers. And uh, it's going to be a case of not clipping the inside corners on this. We go on board with Rotenbach. Pretty tight running so far. King Max left and Long Long Max right. And they would go on to set a benchmark time, of course. The first through the stage, 10 minutes 46. Dead. That's the time to beat. Nah, no more mealy fields, Hendrik. We are out into the wilderness. This is absolute perfect conditions, but watch out for some of the water still lying in the lowlands. That's going to cause some problems when you add that to the slippery conditions that are already out there on the shale that they're racing on. Johnny Gemmel now, second provisionally in the championship. He's already won uh, the event last year, so he certainly would like to uh, repeat that performance. The man and the car, custom made for these sweeping turns. And because he's got all this experience coming into this rally, he'll be able to tune his game on day one and hopefully go for another one. Max left, 
must look at. These road conditions are amazingly good, actually, if you think about it. A week ago, the place was almost flooded, so the organisers did a great job to uh, get the conditions fine. I was enjoying what Storick was saying about not cutting, because if you go up the inside, I mean, check this corner, there's nowhere to go there. There's a wall, in fact. Short max left. They are taking fast right. And Gemmel would go almost four seconds quicker than Rotenbach. Next on the road, Harkin Fecken. Can he uh, set an even faster time in the stage? He's got some pressure on him. I mean, all the eyes of VW and the world are on this rally, so he needs to bring it. And danger right nine. Down into left seven. No cut, no cut. Titans over bump. Into right three, keep in. And right two, stay mid over crest, muddy, slippy. C250. And Fekin would go one full second quicker than uh, Johnny Gemmel, provisionally now the fastest time in the stage. And you're hearing from the instructions from the navigator, still the long line water is really going to cause problems in this early stages. I don't think everyone's really going to bring the heat in stage one. Charles Wilkin in the Basil Reed Ford Focus has gone very well the last event. Can he repeat that? And can they uh, put pressure on the factory teams again? These Fords are almost untouchable this season. It's a real strong package to go up against. JP Damso now in the brand new Team Total Toyota Auris. It's going to take him a while to get used to this car. Uh, interestingly, he damaged this car in a roll in the shakedown yesterday, but it looks absolutely fine. We go on board then. The new vehicle with a bit of a crinkle cut in the roof, but he's looked so strong so far through that gate. And oh, there yeah. is Wilkin. He has had a problem. He must have clipped that gate on the way through. That's a big one. Well, that explains why he uh, hasn't come out of the stage yet. So uh, JP Damso goes past the damaged uh, Ford. Through the gate there, uh, there was a six-gear corner and uh, someone dragged a rock in the, into the road and clipped it and uh, broke the control arm and we had a spin at uh, six-gear flat out and uh, then we rolled a few times and um, yeah, that was it. Unfortunate. Um, I don't think it was my fault this time, but yeah, that's unfortunately that's a game. So they are spectators for the rest of the event. Defending champion Enzo now in the second of the BP Volkswagen Polos. He's already had two podium positions so far this season, and he would certainly like to add to that. Number one plate driver, he should be running good here. And then Williams, the roller from our previous round, got the Ford back together, and he is absolutely pinned. This is really going to suit his style. He passes the other Ford, still on the sideline, not really causing any problems, not taking any lines away at least, but the guys will be aware of that and be aware of the dangers on this stage. Jan Abich now in the uh, third of the BP Volkswagen Polos. He hasn't had a good season so far. Only one second place and two non-finishers, including that spectacular role on the Sassel Rally earlier this season. And uh, if anybody wants a good result, it's Jan Abich. Well, he will have those ultimate support at his home rally. And then Polter, the danger man. Very loose cannon in this championship. We know he's got the speed, but if he can hold it together for an entire rally, that's the situation with this man. Absolutely. And he showed it in the Sassel Rally when he won on only his 10th attempt on a national rally in the top class. Big repairs on that car as well. Remember, he rolled it at a previous round. So he's uh, costing the budget a little bit so far this season. And he would set the fastest time, 10 minutes, 40.1 seconds on the stage. Climbing these hills down into the valleys and back up top. And this is where the setup on the cars and the engine power really comes into play. Let me press caution, left three. Titans to very long seven. Repeat. Crest, caution, left three, Titans, very long seven. Very long seven opens and Titans to six in. Opens and Titans to six in. All the way around, all the way around into Heffern, right seven, no cut at the end. Heffern, right seven, no cut. That is just brilliant footage. Uh, Mark Renier there, one of the previous rally, and he has got his foot down. It's like a never-ending left-hander, so if you get your drift on, you've got it dialed in. Then we go back and pick up on the first of the Peugeots, the 207 Pertex Peugeot of Heinrich Latakan. And he is running good. He is waving the flag high and proud for the Frenchies. Yes, South Africa's uh, Dakar pride. It's uh, Geniel de Villiers in the fourth of the BP Volkswagen Polos. And uh, he would go 20 seconds slower. This is Jalpi van Ica in the new Africa development Volkswagen Polo. Such a popular car in this uh, rally championship. And he's going to be pushing hard to try and get a top tenner. Really needs the support out there. And he has got this thing wound up. Absolutely flat out. This is fantastic, this footage on board. Oh, dear. Oh, he's lost it, then it's going over. That was the smallest of clips. You really haven't got any room for error. The second roll on this stage. Drama it's gonna on be the a, Volkswagen Rally. It is going to be a car eater. We can see it already. This is just we've seen the second of the Pertec Peugeot 207s. He'll be the next car on the road. 
Uh, Nicholas Ryan now in the Grand Mark, Volkswagen Polo, another of the privateer teams trying to make uh, an impression. Now on board with uh, Muhammad Musa in the second of the uh, team total. Toyota Aurises. Should have a slightly cleaner stage for him to race on. The rest of the guys have been sweeping it ahead of him, but it's still going to be very loose. Look at that. It's just shale the whole way through. I uh, like the new uh, colour scheme as well on those cars. Wilder Dipinar now, one of the uh, other privateers. And Chase Atwell, along with Conrad Rosenbach, the second of the two Zimbabweans on this event. So the end of stage number one, it was Mark Cronier taking 1.8 seconds out of the closest rival, Leroy Polto, who was surprised to be up there. And then Reutenbach suffering to be first man on the road, 7.7 .7 seconds down. Service now and a chance to catch the breath and find out how things went for all the runners. We had a good clean stage. It was a bit tricky in the sense that it was um, still quite slippery out at the back there. So yeah, we just decided to keep it clean and tidy. Had a sort of yes in the beginning, which was good. And then we saw Shoal go off and uh, you know, put us sort of put a damp on things. And uh, you know, just pushed, pushed uh, to try and keep it tidy. And there's no room for error here. So you know, you've got to try and keep it as tidy as possible. In one area, it's game over. Looks like we've um, started uh, the next rally off as we did the, the previous one. Um, yeah, look, the road's very fast. Uh, maybe it took a little bit easy there just to get through the first one. But it looks like, like you say, again, it's close again at, up front. And um, we're going to have to see later on. JP, brand new car this weekend. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, brand new. It was brand new till yesterday. And then uh, we had a bit of a... Uh, made, a made a bit of a mistake on the shakedown stage. So, yeah, we've all been hard at work trying to get it ready. But uh, we did our best and yeah, I must say the first stage um, is getting back into things again and then obviously I think we're going to take this event just to get the feel of the car and stuff. Coming into a corner we hit a, a rock on the sun garden, for some reason our steering pump burst a seal or something so I went without power steering. I actually thought so bad I thought the wheel was off. I just steered the car with my forearms after a while. I just pressed my forearms against steering because my hands couldn't hold anymore. So I was slowing down, we lost a minute, thinking that there's something that's going to break off the car right now. In the meantime, it looks pretty good. <laughs> stage two now, Kingsview 1. It's one of the longest stages in South African rallying. Just over 34 kilometers of dirt in the Longmore Forest. And this could be a crucial one for the eventual outcome of the rally. So 19 Ks into 34 Ks, that's a completely different car setup, and the guys are really going to have to pace themselves. I think a lot of guys got very excited going into stage number one, and they had to calm it down now. Well, Conrad Rotenbach is not a happy bunny at the moment. He's trailing by 7.7 .7 seconds, lying in uh, fifth position after only the first stage. It really shows the, uh, the disadvantage of running first on the road. Road sweeper. No one wants to be that man. Rotenbach, though, just going to have to polish his game, work on it and smooth it out. Maybe later on in the rally, he'll be able to come to the front. But right now, he's sitting down there. As you said, 7.7 .7 seconds is starting to become a big number. Johnny Gemmel, fourth overall after the first stage. Only a gap of 3.5 seconds to make up. So can he do it on this long stage? He is going absolutely flat out. 12 stages, you know, so we're on stage number two. Gemmel's pretty good at just easing his way into this, and he brings so much experience to these roads, to this rally. He knows his way, and he knows what he's got to do. As mentioned earlier, he's the winner last year, so he knows exactly what he has to do, except, except uh, doing a uh, wrong there. Johnny Gemmel pushing very hard, that's clear. Spectators definitely picked the wrong corner to stand on the outside of. And he would go almost 40 seconds faster than Conrad Rotenbach on the stage. Erkan Fekker now. He's in uh, third position overall after the first stage. A gap of 2.5 seconds to make up. And they're also pushing hard. 70, right 5, stay wide. Bad bump on the inside. Right 6 tightens to 8. This one tightens to 8. C150 down. Right ease, left 6 keep in. Big wide tracks and the guys can really hang it out loose. It looks like Fekin is really finding his flow. Like I say, only 2.5 seconds down, so he can find some time if he buries himself on this stage. And he is smooth, no stalls. That's Enzo Kuhn carrying the number one as a defending champion. And uh, incidentally, Alton Fekin went 0.6 of a second faster than uh, Johnny Gemmel in the previous stage, so both of them are pushing very hard. John Williams, 11th after stage one. 
And he would certainly just want to finish because after that role in the previous event, he uh, needs to uh, get into the points. Fords, Toyotas and Volkswagens. So those are the guys that are running in the top four at the moment. Peugeots need to step it up a little bit, but there is just a huge contingent of the Volkswagen here at the Volkswagen Rally and they want to podium. They want everyone up there. Happened a few years ago when they had the one, two, three. I think uh, as things stand at the moment in South African rallying, it's going to be a tough ask for them. Here's Leroy Poulter, carrying the lucky for him, number 13 so far, at least. Currently in second position, only 1.8 seconds behind the rally leader. These conditions are perfect for him. They obviously showed it in stage number one, the 19-kilometer stage, where he posted a second fastest time. He should be able to run a similar kind of time on similar kind of terrain. And he's... Oh, he's also gone over. Leroy Poulter, the third big roller of the event so far, and it's only the second stage. There was a high bank on the outside there. He just came in a little bit too hot, clipped the back end and sent him over. Max Crest is right one. Left for Max Crest is right one. Right one into right one. 70, right 8 in, right 80. Yeah, yeah, careful. Into short left 6. Keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Short left 6. And care left 5 opens over bump. Care left 5 opens over bump. Bolter's car on its roof, and apparently both of them are absolutely fine. Um... I think we had a puncture, so we arrived here a little bit loose, you know. So, uh, <laughs> my own fault, just going a bit quickly coming in. Very disappointed, clearly. This is Hein Latigan at the moment, lying in eighth position and uh, looking strong. This, this team is improving all the time. He's got to find 12 seconds on the stage if he wants to get up to the front, and he finds his way cleanly through the stricken Polter. Nicholas Ryan inside the top 10. In fact, he's in 10th position. That little uh, corner also catching him out there. And that will cost him some time on the stage. He's just trying to run a top 10 at the moment and uh, keep a clean rally. Mohamed Musa, 12th overall after stage one at the moment. Still learning the handling characteristics of the new Aorus. And he would set a very respectable time on the stage. Well, it looks like they can uh, get the car back on the two wheels and the damage not too serious. Cronier takes his second consecutive stage victory. Fekin now into second position with Polter out, Gemmel up into third. This gives the teams a